What is this brief mortal life, if not the pursuit of legacy? Targaryens take what they want with fire and blood. It's their whole thing! The fire, the blood, the taking. And now they're ready to take us back in time with the Game of Thrones prequel series, House of the Dragon. We already know Daenerys Targaryen, the triumphant freedom fighter with countless titles and in-game achievements who scratched and clawed her way out of a toxic world of slavery and abuse so that she could go totally insane and incinerate an entire city of four people. We also know her older brother, Viserys, who died the way he lived, demanding to see the manager. But who are all these new Targaryens from hundreds of years before Game of Thrones, and how do they connect to the Julia and Eric Roberts of the family? Here at IGN, we drink, we know things, and sometimes we show things. And this Westeros 101 is all about those damn Targaryens. The Targaryens are famous for their short fuses and long hair. Long platinum hair, to be exact. Sensual, windswept, unmistakable. If you see someone with pale skin and a silken silver mane, they're probably a Planaris or a Blagor or some other prince or princess riddled with generational incest-induced madness. There's also a good chance they have a flashy, obnoxiously loud ride designed to make themselves the center of attention. The Harley Davidson of the fantasy world. Really, dragons. The Targaryens come from the Valyrian Peninsula, which found itself being completely annihilated by volcanoes and earthquakes in a massive calamity known afterwards as the Doom of Valyria, which all scholars and philosophers of the era agreed was a totally badass name. The Targaryens not only stood out as a large branching family of hotheads and himbo locks, but as dragon lords. The Targaryens were one of the families in Valyria who could not only ride dragons, but look cool doing it. Adding to their massive egos and rampant narcissism, the ability to tame dragons also made the Targaryens obsessed with keeping their bloodline quote unquote pure by constantly marrying brother to sister which then only increased their chances of having an unhinged, sizzling fajita platter as a kid. And now you've woken the dragon. Over a decade before the events of Game of Thrones, Viserys as a young boy and Daenerys in utero were whisked away from King's Landing when Robert Baratheon and his allies sacked the city, wanting to kill anyone who looked like anime Gandalf. Die, you fools. Among the dead, their father, the Mad King, Aerys II. Aerys was the final Targaryen king of Westeros, ending a three-century family rule of the continent and giving Daenerys the drive she needed to return to the land she'd never seen and reclaim the Iron Throne in the name of leaving this clingy weirdo behind. So where did Mad King Aerys and all his madcap burning people alive for his own amusement glory come from? Well, the Targaryens, thanks to one Lady Danis, aka Danis the Dreamer, having an apocalyptic vision about the esteemed capital city of Valeria being consumed by fire, wisely fled their homeland 12 years before the doom. Danis' father, Lord Aenar, took his family to Dragonstone right off the coast of Westeros along with five dragons. When everything became leftover lasagna back home, the Targaryens found themselves as the only dragon lord standing. After a hundred years of chilling at Dragonstone, Daenys' descendant, Aegon I, decided his family should be neighborly and subdue the Seven Kingdoms next door using their dragons as the ultimate cheat code. No one even pretended like it was a fair fight. It's like when a predator shows up with advanced technology and weaponry looking for honorable conflict except he just walks around being all invisible like a rotten punk. <laughs> But look, as you well know, Westeros is a grim, miserable place where the people only grow their hair long to cover their grumpy, sourpuss faces. It's a violent, cruel, okay, admittedly sometimes hilarious, collection of atrocity exhibits that pass for kingdoms, and Aegon I became the first dude to wrangle them all together and become the undisputed unified champion. He's the undisputed champion! This was a war! The desert district of Dorne resisted at first because Dorne never met a battle. They convinced everyone they could win until their head turned into a gender reveal party for the Kool-Aid man they couldn't resist. 
but eventually everyone fell in line with a Targaryen on the throne. And fell in line with a throne that looked like a saw trap Jigsaw created to teach someone the importance of using a standing desk at work. Do you want to play a game? After Aegon I, Westeros experienced a full century of just kind of being chill. Just a hundred years of Targaryens being in charge, with dragons just kicking it, totally not being there to set your entire castle on fire if you act up, and things being pleasant and prosperous. This is where House of Dragon picks up. Right at the end of this piece and right at the beginning of a Targaryen civil war known as the Dance of the Dragons, which all scholars and philosophers of the era agreed was an even f***ing cooler name than the Doom of Valyria. House of the Dragon starts after the 55 year reign of fourth Targaryen king Jaehaerys I. Jaehaerys' line of succession is a spring salad mix of complications, so a big to do is held at Heron Hall. Yes, the place where Arya made a death deal with Jack and Hagar. And his grandson, Viserys I, played by Paddy Considine in House of the Dragon, is chosen to be the next king. Everything is fine until Viserys' own offspring eventually go to war over the Iron Throne. This all is happening 170 years before the Daenerys we know is born, and there are a whopping 17 dragons to somehow account for and possibly kill off, so there is a lot of story to tell. House of the Dragon also spans the course of decades, meaning there are two sets of actresses playing Viserys' daughter, Rhaenyra, Millie Alcock and Emma Darcy, and her childhood friend, daughter of the Hand, Alicent Hightower, Emily Carey, and Olivia Cook. There's only one Matt Smith though. Excess, excess. He's gonna morb his way through all ages of Viserys' dastardly brother, Daemon Targaryen, commander of the City Watch and creator of the infamous Gold Cloaks. Plus, there's Viserys' cousin, the queen who never was, Rhaenys, played by Eve Bess. Rhaenys came close to being Westeros' first queen, but the harem string hand bones of Harren Hall were like, a woman can't be in charge, that seems like a job for a boy who got protected and carried through his entire adventure. Who has a better story, we ask? As you'll see on House of the Dragon, the Targaryens managed to unify Westeros like no one had done before, while also eventually sending the entire land spiraling into chaos. Silver lining though, their brand of turmoil involves dragon battles. Sure, everything sucks and death's raining down from above, but dragons are fighting in the sky. And sometimes, a dragon will fall, and then, if it doesn't crush you and everyone you love, you get to climb on a dead dragon and be like, Get me! I'm on a dead dragon! Woo! Pretty sure you get to be Lord of Lizard Bottom after that, or something. Anyhow, seeing dragons zoom around and spit mad fire at each other has to take the sting out of being collateral damage. Right? Where is duty? Where is sacrifice?